The ideas expressed in the following presentations are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views of ACI or its committees. ACI web sessions are recorded at ACI conventions or other concrete industry events and will be made available for viewing free of charge for one week. Thereafter, they will be archived on the ACI website or added to ACI's online CEU program, depending on their content. My name is Nyong Soo James Shen from Unisys South Korea. Uh, I'm going to talk about earthquake resistant, resistant design of hollow bridge columns with low cost fiber reinforced cement composite. So, as a starting point, I'd like to introduce the motivation of my research and the research objective, then, test for low-cost FRCC hollow columns will be discussed. And lastly, I'm going to conclude by pointing out future research needs. In uh, January 2010, a strong earthquake of magnitude 7 struck Haiti. Um, in this disaster, more than 600,000 people died or were heavily uh, seriously injured. Also, about 250,000 residential buildings collapsed or were severely damaged. So this is a historical, uh, historical picture featuring UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon visiting the collapsed headquarters by Haiti earthquake. About 10 days later, actually, there was another huge, even greater earthquake in Chile. However, only less than 550 people died at this time. So comparing the two events, Newsweek reported that the earthquake don't kill people. Buildings do. Chile's buildings are better built, so they are therefore more earthquake resistant. So this clearly highlights the importance of adequate earthquake resistant design. HPFRCC is characterized by strain hardening under tension with the presence of uh, various fibers. Uh, the fiber types could be varied, uh, as you can see. So comparing uh, the effort ordinary effort, uh, comparing the HPFRCC with ordinary conventional FRC, <laughs> HPFRCC sustains a much larger deformation by strain hardening and also dissipate much more energy and show superior damage control with multiple micro-cracking. The properties of HPFRCC are difficult to be predicted, actually. Uh, they are strongly affected by the fiber characteristics, which include material type, physical, chemical, mechanical, and geometrical properties. And uh, also the property, the property is uh, affected by the uh, proper bond between, it's, it's uh, strongly affected by proper bond between the matrix and the fibers. So during the last decade, some research groups focused on investigating the seismic applications of HPFRCC. So Professor Lee at the University of Michigan demonstrated the effectiveness of HPFRCC in a fracture dominated column. Uh, even without transverse reinforcement in uh, the HPFRCC column, it showed larger ductility and energy dissipation and superior damage control. Uh, Professor Barra Montesino in uh, the University of Michigan uh, identified various members that can be improved by the use of HPFRCC. He actually focused on shear dominated members such as beam column joint. So uh, this uh, HPFRCC joint showed much better seismic performance, including damage tolerance through uh, multiple micro-cracking. Uh, Professor Farah Montesino and also my research group tested the effect of HPFRCC on the behavior of coupling beams. 
Uh, these tests discover the potential to use HPA FRCC coupling beams as an energy dissipation device and to relax steel congestions in the current uh, design code. Then a question rose up to me, how about applying ordinary FRC for seismic design? So HPFRCC materials are typically expensive to be engineered for this uh, strain hardening. Here is FRC. So uh, FRC, fiber rainfall, ordinary fiber rainforest concrete, is characterized by strain softening. But uh, FRC may be enough to satisfy the requirements in low to moderate seismic regions. So to investigate uh, this, we applied relatively low cost FRCCs, which is a fiber reinforced uh, cement composite to uh, RC hollow columns. Uh, shear resisting mechanisms in RC hollow columns are not well understood so far, especially after cracking behavior. Uh, so there is no design consensus, design uh, code consensus in the shear design of hollow columns. Also, it is very difficult to construct RC hollow columns because of reinforcement congestion. So here are typical reinforcement details in practice for rectangular columns and for uh, circular columns. As you can see, uh, there are a lot of ties between the interior and uh, exterior uh, longitudinal bars. Very difficult to construct. So this study was conceived to investigate the effectiveness of low-cost FRCC in the shear-dominated hollow columns on improvement in size and performance, such as energy dissipation, ductility, and damage control, and also to investigate the potential to relax confinement reinforcement. So we tested uh, five hollow column specimens. Uh, they all had the same concrete uh, dimensions, outside concrete dimensions. The section size was about 900 millimeter times 600 millimeter. Um, and the longitudinal seal ratio was uh, same to be 1.8%. Hollow section ratio was 40%. Uh, for the eight FRCC specimens, only the zone of D from the bottom of the, of the column is cast with FRCC material. So uh, three key design variables were examined, uh, including fiber volumetric ratio, coarse aggregate, and uh, length to depth aspect ratio. The fiber ratio varied from 0, 1, 2%, and the aspect ratio uh, was uh, two, uh, 2 or 3. Uh, we tried to keep up with the idea of using uh, low-cost FRCC by uh, employing economical fiber. The type of fibers were hooked steel fiber, and the uh, length to diameter ratio was about 60, and the tensile strength was uh, 1,000 megapascal. So we tested the four, four types of FRCCs used, used in this uh, study under uniaxial tension, direct tension. Um, all cases showed uh, strange softening, actually, so we cannot say this is HPFRCC, which is high-performance fiber for cement composites. So uh, I, I classify this as uh, just low-cost FRCC. Uh, but the higher fiber ratio, the specimens with higher fiber ratio showed the tougher response uh, the normal concrete actually sh showed uh, 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 actually separate, completely separate af after uh, showing a single wide crack. Uh, also, the materials were tested under uniaxial compression. As you can see, uh, the specimens like SF2 having the 2% fibers, they showed much better maximum strain capacity which uh, actually promised uh, more ductility in the uh, seismic design of the specimens using this material. 
So uh, the uh, specimens were tested in their oblique positions, and the loading was uh, applied at the uh, position at the top of the column. And the loading, his if, uh, as for the loading history, uh, two same drips consecutive cycles were applied to investigate uh, st uh, strength and stiffness degradation. Uh, when it comes to the instrumentation, uh, we installed uh, two LBDTs at, at, the at the side face of the column to estimate the shear deformation, and also we installed two, five, uh, two wire extension gauges at each face of the beam to estimate uh, fracture deformation. So here start the test result. Uh, first, uh, failure mode of the specimens. Um, uh, all the FRCC specimens actually underwent shear bond failure. As you can see, you can see the big X-shaped crack. Shear bond failure combined with the uh, column bar buckling at the end, uh, while the normal concrete specimen at the end it actually failed in uh, web, sh web shear cracking. Um, so a, cup, a couple of major inclined cracks shows a gradual in increase uh, in, in, the in their widths until the specimens failed, and no fracture failure observed at the end. Um, however, as you can see uh, from the test result, we concluded that the F low cost FRCCs are not that effective in damage control, uh, especially for the case of shear-dominated uh, hollow columns. Comparing uh, the two specimens with uh, coarse aggregate, uh, here two specimens have uh, coarse aggregate, and uh, left side uh, there is no fiber, so this is normal concrete, and the uh, right side uh, it has a coarse aggregate and 1% fiber. Uh, you can clearly see that uh, 1% uh, uh, fiber specimen showed much larger ductility and energy dissipation than the normal concrete specimen. So all the FRCC specimens showed sta sta stable inelastic response up to 3 to 4% drift, sustaining severe shear cracking even without without uh, transverse steel. Uh, here we can compare the effects of fiber volume ratio, the top part so 1% uh, C ratio, and the uh, bottom part 2% C ratio. Um, the specimens with 2% uh, fiber ratio showed uh, larger ductility, energy dissipation, and stable behavior than the 1% specimens. However, between the, uh, if we compare the top two graphs, which are for 1% uh, fiber specimens, and the left side with uh, coarse aggregate, and the right side without coarse aggregate, uh, you can, we cannot really you know, distinguish the differences. So the effects of aggregate was not apparent in the case of 1% specimens. Um, although all the FRCC specimens eventually failed in shear, they sustained intensive, intensive crack openings due to shear until up to 3 to 4 percent drift. So these pictures were taken at the drift just before critical strength drop. So as you can see, enormously large shear cracks were sustained by uh, FRCC specimens. Um, as for the ductility, displacement ductility, uh, you are looking at the uh, enveloped curves of hysteretic curves for f those five specimens. So uh, uh, the ductility was defined for 80% of maximum shear from uh, from the first yielding point. Uh, comparing those two uh, displacement ductility actually 
But the higher fiber ratio specimens improved displacement ductility, as you can see. It was so, um, so we can say the FRCC specimens showed much higher displacement ductility uh, with better sustaining severe shear cracking. Uh, when it comes to energy dissipations, uh, it is very clear to see that the higher the specimens with the higher uh, higher fiber ratios showed much higher energy dissipations. Uh, this is because, of course, that uh, because uh, those specimens actually uh, experience much less pinching in the load uh, drift responses. Um, next, we uh, estimated displacement components caused by shear and fracture uh, using the data from the instrument installed in the test. So uh, shear deformation was shear deformation was estimated by using uh, two LBDTs, X-shaped LBDTs, and uh, fracture rotation at the right side was estimated from uh, wire extension gauges. So here is a shear distortion behavior. So the top, those, uh, top two graphs represent 1% uh, FRCC specimen and bottom 2% FRCC specimen. So uh, if we compare 3% strain, uh, shear distortion, then it is clear that 2% uh, specimen showed much smaller shear distortions. And also, the fracture fixed end rotations, 2% uh, uh, specimen showed much larger uh, rotations. So from the, based on the, these two uh, previous presented uh, result, uh, the displacement due to shear distortion is estimated. Uh, so in general, the specimens with uh, less fiber ratio showed um, higher shear distortion and displacement due to shear distortion. This indicates that the specimen with a higher fiber ratio was much better to sustain uh, severe shear cracking. So in conclusion, low-cost FRCC considerably improved, improved ductility as well as energy dissipation of hollow columns. And the FRCCs were not effective in damage control. So for the future research needs, uh, quantitative assessment of material mix design versus seismic performance should be investigated for real application in design and uh, efficient use between the FRCC, uh, FRC, FRCC versus HPFRCC should be investigated. Thank you so much uh, for your attention. Uh, actually, I'd like to ac acknowledge the support from my school, which is uh, Ulsan National Institute of Sci Science and Technology, and uh, support from National Research Foundation of Korea. Thank you so much.